Yo, 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 what is good, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And as you can probably tell by the title, today's video, we're going to go over some NBA players who I believe could have breakout seasons next year. Now, disclaimer before going into this, I'm not going to talk about guys who are already somewhat established. For example, Shea Gilgis Alexander, in my opinion, could win most improved player next season. But I don't want to talk about him again because he's already gotten a ton of attention. I talk about him plenty on Twitter, twitter.com slash three underscore cone. Go check it out. And I want to talk more about some guys who sometimes might go under the radar a little bit. People who I think they could play critical roles to their team's success this season. Even if they didn't have major roles in the past, their roles kind of vary a little bit. But none of them are really known as stars amongst NBA fans. So these are guys who... I think could make that jump, whether it's because they're going to have an expanded role this season, just that their numbers indicate that they could have a jump, or they have extra players coming into their team that I think could help them increase their production or showcase more of their game. Uh, with that being said, please leave a like on the video if you enjoy, hit the subscribe button. You guys are crazy. I've already hit a thousand subscribers despite only posting two videos. So thank you so much. Uh, continue to like it up so more people can discover this channel and yeah, um, at this point, if you subscribe, you'll be one of the first real ones that exist. So if I blow up, you can say that you were one of the first ones here. So please subscribe, like the video, and let's get into it. The first player on our list is Chris Boucher off the Toronto Raptors. He is a power forward slash center. He's also a former G League Defensive Player of the Year and G League MVP, actually in the same season. Uh, last season, he averaged about 6.6 .6 points per game, 4.5 rebounds per game, about half an assist a game, one block and about 47.2% from the field and about, shot about 32.2% from three. Now, these numbers don't really pop off the page uh, when you first look at them. However, he is only entering his third full season. He played like one game that first season with the Golden State Warriors, but the past two seasons he's played with the Raptors, entering his third one with them. Additionally, he's only 27 years old, which isn't super young, but he's about to enter that age where most players hit their prime, so if there was any time for him to make a jump it would be now additionally he made a jump last year in field goal percentage and he stayed about the same in three point percentage but he took double the attempts from three which is a pretty good sign that he could find a path to develop into a pretty solid volume three-point shooter additionally the raptors took some huge hits to their front court depth this offseason with the loss of serge Ibaka and marcus Gasol, which should give him a ton more minutes especially since last season he only played 13.2 now with their two starting bigs, or their two most prominent bigs, gone, he's going to have to step in and play that role behind new acquisition Aaron Baines. If Toronto wants to remain in that upper echelon in the East, Boucher is going to have to play a part in that, and I feel like he can. He's a guy who I have a lot of faith in. He's pretty athletic. He's about 6'9", so he's a little undersized for a center, but he plays somewhat bigger than that. He catches a lot of lobs. He can be a pretty solid pick and pop threat if that three-point percentage stays about the same and he continues to grow in volume. So, with that being said, and having great guards like Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet at his side, giving him opportunities, I'm hopeful and I believe that Chris Boucher is going to have a pretty good season for the Raptors and help them overcome the loss of front court depth. The second guy on our list is someone who, if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen me rave about multiple times, uh, especially um, during the bubble, you probably saw me talk about him a lot. He is a power forward, about 6'8", and his name is Darius Baisley. If you're an OKC fan, I'm 100% sure that you agree with me when I say one day Darius Baisley will be a star in this league. If you're not, looking at his rookie stats, they may not really jump off the page to you if you don't know much about him. In his rookie season, he averaged 5.6 points per game, 4 rebounds, a 7th of an assist, half a steal, but 0.7 blocks on 39.4% from the field and 34.8% from 3 on only about 18 and a half minutes a game. If you look at his bubble stats though, in which he was given 27.5 minutes per game and a way more trust handling the ball and he was given a lot more opportunities in general it's a whole different story 13 points per game 6.3 rebounds per game one and a half assists 0.4 steals 0.8 blocks shooting 42.5 percent from the field which is about a three point increase but 46.3 percent from three on five attempts per game which is kind of crazy as someone who wasn't a very good three-point shooter in the regular season he is also only 19 years old, and his game looks really polished despite being that age. He shows off a lot of handles that aren't really easy for someone at his height. He shows off a great step-back jumper, especially in the bubble, 
and this offseason, if you haven't noticed, OKC's kind of traded everyone, so he's going to get a ton of opportunities this season. I think he could definitely be a most improved player candidate, but unfortunately, they don't really give that award to second-year players very often, so I don't think he'll end up being in that running, but I do think he's going to have an incredible season, and he's a name that you really need to watch out for. The third player on our list is the center for Washington, who I believe will have a fantastic season this year at only the age of 22 years old, especially due to the addition of Russell Westbrook to that roster, and that player is Thomas Bryant. Bryant feels like he's been in the league longer than he has. He's only going into his fourth season in the NBA, and it's only his third with Washington after playing one year for the Lakers. Last season, he averaged 13.2 points per game, about 7.2 rebounds, 1.8 assists, 1.1 blocks on 58.1% from the field, and 40% shooting from three on two attempts per game. 40% from three is pretty crazy, but two attempts isn't that much. However, in the bubble, he upped that and he still looked fantastic. In the bubble, he shot 40% from three, as he did about pre-bubble, but on over double the attempts, going from two attempts per game to 4.6 attempts per game in the bubble. That's kind of crazy. The fact that he was able to double that volume from his season total and still hit the same amount was kind of ridiculous. He really looked like a, one of the stretch bigs that uh, this league is kind of leaning towards now. He also put up nine rebounds in that bubble, which is about 1.8 more than he did for a season total, 1.4 steals, which was a side of a game which we have not really seen, and two blocks, almost double his regular season total. Unfortunately, in his first two seasons though, he's kind of lacked a great point guard to find him with things like lobs, um, hit him on the block when he posts up, However, this season he has Russell Westbrook, an all-star point guard who should hopefully open the game up a lot for him. That should, that could have been John Wall, but unfortunately he dealt with injuries, so Westbrook will definitely have to do. Westbrook is a great passer and a slasher who's going to give Thomas Bryant a ton of opportunities to both run pick and roll and pick and pop. I expect him to be able to excel in both of these roles, as he's shown the ability to do both previously, but having Russell Westbrook, that dynamic point guard that's really been lacking for that team, I think that'll make his opportunities way greater. Additionally, he's already a great offensive player, but I think he can keep having that great offensive season that he sh kind of showed off last season, especially in the bubble. However, the key for him is going to have to be his defense. Washington's defense was abysmal last year. Like, like it was terrible. If you guys remember that Wizards-Rockets game at the start of last season, that was like 160 to 155 or something crazy like that. Washington was terrible defensively. So if Washington wants to live up to their potential, he's got to be better on that end. He's shown the ability to block some shots, but he has to be solid defensively. He has to alter shots more, and I do believe he can do it. If he continues to develop as a rim protector, Washington might be tough for a, some East team in their first round matchup. I really hope Bryant is able to develop on that end, because if he can become a solid defensive center with all the offensive potential he's already shown, the sky's the limit for him. The fourth player on this list is our first guard on the list, and someone who's honestly been a little disappointing in his first few seasons, and that is Markel Fultz. Fultz was the first overall pick a couple years ago, and he really hasn't shown that in his first few years. However, he has shown some flashes of potential in Orlando, and he's only 21 years old. In his first full season with Orlando, Fultz averaged about 12.1 points per game, 3.3 rebounds, 5.1 assists, 1.3 steals, 2 turnovers, and he shot 46.5% from the field. Unfortunately, only 26.7% from 3, which is something he does need to keep working on. But his free throw percentage, which was a huge controversy back in the day, his like weird free throw form, uh, it rose from 56.8% to 73%, which is a pretty big jump. So hopefully that indicates that his jumper is improving, that his form continues to get better, kind of back to how it was in Washington. Now, while he has been a disappointment, I do want to remind people that he was the consensus number one overall pick. Like, there wasn't an argument about like Lonzo or Tatum, like it was Fultz. So he has that in there somewhere, and I believe, or at least I hope that this season is where he starts to show it. He's shown those flashes, and he does continue to make those jumps, but it hasn't turned into something consistent, especially that of a number one overall pick. However, there is room for him to grow this season, as Orlando lost DJ Augustine to the Bucks this offseason, someone who did take some of Fultz's minutes, and I'm hoping that this means that Orlando looks to Fultz as their lead guard, who starts all their games, plays a big bulk of their minutes, and he really gets the opportunity to try and show what he's made of, 
before he hits restricted free agency this offseason because the Magic are going to have a big decision to make with him. If some team goes out there and tries to pay him some money, the Magic have to decide if they're willing to match that or just let him walk. And it kind of shows that they are willing to let him walk because they drafted Cole Anthony. I know the Magic for a long time have been looking for a point guard, and they might think that's Fultz, they might think that's Cole Anthony, but this is Fultz's real opportunity to prove that it is him, and I'm hoping that both the incoming contract year he has and the presence of Cole Anthony getting picked up in the draft for the Magic lights a fire under him, and I really, really want to see him succeed this season and hopefully continue to lead the Magic to the playoffs. It will be tough in a tougher Eastern Conference and with the lack of Jonathan Isaac, but if he shows that number one pick potential, it is possible for him. Last player on this list is another center. I know I went through a lot of them, but I do believe he's going to have a pretty big season. He plays for the New York Knicks, and his name is Mitchell Robinson. Now, for the first time in a while, I've actually liked the Knicks offseason so far. They haven't signed a bunch of old guys who are going to take minutes from their young developing core, which for some reason seems to be somewhat of a common theme for the New York Knicks. Over the last two seasons, Mitchell Robinson has not had as much opportunity as he may have this season. He's played in 127 games up to this point, but he's only started 26, and only 7 of those came this past season, which is a pretty low number for a guy that a lot of people consider a pretty big part of the Knicks' future, and in my opinion, he's critical to them, and should hopefully be getting every single start this season. I think Tom Thibodeau will give him that opportunity, but I guess we'll see. Last season, Mr. Robinson put up about 9.7 points per game, 7 boards, with 3 of those being offensive, really showcasing his ability to crash the offensive glass, half an assist a game, and 2 blocks, which is pretty impressive for someone at his young age, and he also had the highest field goal percentage of all time at 74.2%. However, even though he put up those pretty solid stats for someone his age, he only played 23.1 minutes a game, something that, if Tom Thibodeau's reputation is correct, will change this season as Thibodeau is known for playing his starters a ton of minutes and Robinson, who at this point is the only really prominent center on the roster, should be getting a lot of those minutes. My hope is that he plays over 30 minutes per game for the first time in his career and that this around 7-8ish minute jump really is huge for him and really allows him to continue that production that he shows in limited time. He also shows a lot of defensive potential, which is kind of showcased in his two blocks. Now, blocks a game don't really tell the whole story, but he does look good defensively. He has a lot of athleticism, a lot of length, things that can really disrupt people around the rim. And bringing in a defensive coach like Tom Thibodeau, I hope that will unlock that defensive potential that he has showcased so far. He's also had a lot of time to work since the Knicks were left out of the bubble, not being good enough to make it there. And I hope that that time he spent in the offseason continuing to work on his game, and I expect him this season to establish himself as a pretty important piece for the Knicks' future. And that brings us to the end of our list. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed and you want to see more content like this. I'm going to continue posting it through the off season and the NBA season, so make sure you're around for that. Additionally, go ahead and leave me a comment and tell me if there's any players you think I should have mentioned on this list, players that you think are breakout candidates for the upcoming season. Additionally, tell me if there, you think there's someone I got wrong or if you agree with someone on this list, you're also really high on them. With that being said, once again, I want to thank you for watching. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at 3 underscore Cone. I tweet on there a lot. I live tweet Thunder games when the season gets back, and I'm going to be talking basketball on there 24-7, so you don't want to miss out on that if you enjoy content like this. Finally, yes, I am getting that face cam soon. I talked about it last video. I might have talked about it in my first video. I know some people have asked about it, and I promise it is coming soon. I'm still just getting some stuff figured out with my new setup, so be patient. I promise it's coming. And with that, I think that's really all I have. Um, thank you guys again so much for watching. Like I said, leave the comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Real one, say it back.